Hello and welcome everyone to our webinar about the Joint Masters in Super Diversity in Education, Organizations and Society, SEOS. This is the first online information session of the program and we're very happy that you have decided to join our information session. Um, my name is Melissa Bache, I'm from Koch University. Specifically, I work in the International Student Recruitment Directorate. My task today is to be the host of the webinar, and I'm very uh, honored to be here with several professors from this new master's program who will be giving you all the details about the curriculum offering of this program. Before we get started, uh, let me just move along. Um, just some very quick housekeeping information. We are recording the webinar, so all registered participants will receive the video link, and we will also be posting the information session video on the unique YouTube channel, and I will explain just after this what is unique in case this is the first time you hear about our wonderful uni University Alliance. Um, and we kindly ask you to write your questions on the Q&A section of your screen. So if you're joining us from a mobile phone, you can also do that. Or if you're joining us from a desktop, desktop or laptop computer, you can do that. Um, if you want to share on the chat part of your screen where you're joining us from today, that would also be wonderful because we are also interested to know from how many countries, how many cities people are watching us today and learning more about our program. So um, this is the, the best part of this. It's the people who are behind all the efforts for more than a year, I think, uh, to develop this wonderful new master's program. And some of them, not all of them, are here today. So I want to introduce them to you. Uh, first of all, Professor Henrike Terhardt from Ruhr University Bochum in Germany. You want to say hello, Professor? <laughs> So they're all here. They will be speaking about each of their paths. So, yeah. Hello, everyone. Hi. Um, then we also have Professor Sandra Asman, also from Ruhr University Bochum in Germany. Hello. Very nice that you join our webinar today. Thank you. Uh, we have Associate Professor Vishna Rajik from the University of Zagreb in Croatia. Well, hi to everyone and a warm welcome from Zagreb. Thank you. Um, Associate Professor Amanda Alencar from Erasmus University Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Hello all, and thank you for joining our webinar today. Thank you. Um, we also have Associate Professor Joa Hitola from the University of Ulu in Finland. Hi everyone, uh, wonderful to be here. Thank you. Um, also, Assistant Professor Elena Tuparevska from the University of Deusto in Spain. Hello, everyone. Greetings from Bilbao. Thank you. Um, we also have uh, Ms. Monica Gessing from Ruhr University in Bochum, Germany, who is you know, uh, part of the unique uh, coordination team. She hello, everyone. Yeah. Yes, she will be answering okay. a lot of questions later on, I'm sure. So, yes. So, um, we are going to get started to let you know about, uh, you know, how this program came to be and what is it a part of, and then look at, into more details about the program, specialization paths, admissions, and then we will have time at the end for about 10 minutes to answer any questions you might have about the program. So to get started, uh, for those of you who may be very new to the concept or even the name of Unique, uh, to to let you know what this is, it's a European University Alliance that started in 2020. So now we're in the fourth year of the Alliance and it's 2.0 version. Uh, it's an alliance that connects 10 universities in Europe, which you can see on the map on your screens. And the purpose of this alliance is to create a truly new educational experience that focuses on inclusion, mobility and societal impact. And what joins all of these 10 universities across Europe is the fact that they are located in cities in post-industrial transition. So that is one of the areas where they share commonalities and why there's different uh, research, teaching, uh, mobility, and other activities that are being developed as part of this alliance. This alliance, of course, it's supported by the European Union. So it's part of a wider program of Euro European universities that the European Union has uh, supported for several years. 
If you want to find out more about the about Unique in itself and all the activities that it's doing, uh, you can visit the website, which you can also see on the screen, which is unique.eu. One of the most interesting, you know, or the the uh, areas where the Alliance has advanced quite a lot in the past three years is this idea of bringing science to the city and specifically not only social sciences, but also other disciplines. So it has developed a unique concept called the Unique City Labs in which different stakeholders from city administrations, the private sector, the third or NGO non-for-profit sector section and the universities involved in the Alliance come together to, to basically collaborate and create solutions to common challenges. Uh, this is part of a wider programming of engaged research and there's a whole uh, range of activities happening in that regard. And another area is why we're here today because uh, part of the Alliance uh, goals are to develop joined master degrees and other educational programs that help to address those societal challenges that the cities and Europe as a whole uh, has in common. So the UNIQUE launched its first master's program last year. It's The acronym is REPIC and it stands for Redesigning the Post-Industrial City. And today we're very happy to be starting the, you know, the launch of our second joint master's degree program, which is in super diversity in education organizations and society. So now we're going to talk about the program itself. Um, and we thought it would be important to uh, go to some basic definitions because uh, the concept of, of super diversity is still a, a, you know, an in, develop, in development, let's say. So when we say super diversity, the, the common definition that these partner universities have agreed upon and based on the literature and the research in this topic is that it refers to an increasing social complexity of diversity in contemporary societies with a growing acknowledgement of the intersectionality of social categories like ethnicity, race, gender, sexuality, culture, religion, disability, social, economic, and legal stat status. And of course, it's not inclusive. It, it may include many other aspects. And all of this in a context, a societal context of uh, social and economic inequality, environmental crises, including biodiversity collapse, climate change, resource shortages, which will be necessary for social and economic transitions. So it is a very complex uh, concept and this is why, you know, a, a master's program and even later on, for example, doctoral programs will be very much needed to help society adapt to this growing complexity. So continuing on that on that line, why should there be a master's in super diversity as well? Within the context of Europe, there is a, a reality that, you know, there are more and more complex processes of diversification and transformation in education, in organizations, and the wider society. You can see some recent examples from France, from the United Kingdom, from Germany, about the growing importance and acknowledgement of not only diversity and inclusion as necessary, but the complexity of properly integrating uh, those considerations in policy making, in um, economic considerations, and every aspect of society. Um, and of course, it's not only about the no, the need to understand it, but also to analyze its impact in these domains and also to develop co-creative capacities to shape that transition towards an inclusive European future, because it's, it's where we're going towards. Um, why also there should be a master's in this topic? Because having that super diversity lens or approach will help uh, professionals who graduate and who specialize in these areas to capture the growing social complexity of diversity. And it's very important because it challenges simplified ways of thinking about diversity in terms of groups, which is how most of us until now have been exposed to the concepts of diversity in terms of how, for example, mainstream media portrays this or how we see it uh, applied in our organizations, whether we are in education or in other industries or sectors. So the aim of the program really is that um, if you complete this master's, 
you will have a broad knowledge of, first of all, interdisciplinary approaches to the social complexity of super diversity and its impact on different sectors of society. So interdisciplinary is a word that you will keep hearing uh, a lot when you when we talk about this program because it's one of the key principles of how modules have been designed uh, by all the partner universities and the paths have also been designed, the specialization paths have been designed. Uh, second of all, it will help you as a graduate of the program to know how to develop new ways of intercultural understanding and productive collaboration through innovative pedagogical and participatory practices, which for some of you, you may have already had some exposure to such type of practices through your academic, like for example, bachelor degree level or professional experiences, but this is gonna go into a more in-depth level of understanding. And third of all, um, if you're a graduate from the program, you should be able to contribute innovatively to the creation of new knowledge. So as a, as a scientist, a, a person who has had a, a, you know, a deeper level of understanding of the topic to create new knowledge and the development and application of theories of super diversity through relevant teaching and learning approaches and by answering research questions that have society, societal as well as academic relevance. And we will talk what this means specifically when we come to the thesis uh, approach of this master's program. So what is unique about the uh, SEOS program? From now on, we will keep referring to it as SEOS. So uh, as I said before, it, it takes an interdisciplinary approach because it brings together um, you know, experts uh, who have done extensive research and teaching in the areas of educational sciences, social sciences, and organization and management studies together. Um, and at the same time, it gives freedom to students to specialize in one of these disciplines based on their academic background and career goals. It also takes an intersectional approach uh, that aims to move beyond and in between single dimensions of diversity. So there are other programs that, for example, may uh, focus on gender studies or migration studies, um, but this program tries to kind of look in an intersectional way at how these different uh, you know, aspects of diversity interact in complex processes. It also takes a co-creative approach, as we said before, because uh, you will see that several of the courses of the program or modules incorporate collaboration with local stakeholders of the eight cities in which the program takes place. And we will learn more about uh, where, you know, which are those universities and what are those cities in order to shape inclusive practices. So the most concrete example of that is going to be through a specific course called the practice module in which students will be developing a unique city lab and we will talk more about what what that is and finally um, it also takes a hybrid approach in terms of the teaching format of the courses because it allows students to choose between virtual and physical mobility options to take into account different students uh, realities of family commitment, budgets, visa restrictions. So uh, it allows for those who want a high level of physical mobility to do so over the course of two years, but those who want a low level of physical mobility and to remain in maybe one of the uh, university cities for the entire duration or just a maximum of two to also do that. Now, um, just to give an overview of the program in a more practical way, the qualification that it's awarded is a Master of Arts. The degree title is a joint degree, Master of Arts in Super Diversity in Education Organizations and Society. So you will receive one diploma, one degree that is issued by the eight participating universities. And you are um, enrolled as a student in these eight universities over a period of two years, which is eight semesters or 24 months. The master program has a total of 120 European Credit Transfer System credits, ECTS. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with, with this framework or system, one, and the, what was agreed between the different partners of the program, is that one ECTS credit point corresponds with the study workload of 27 hours. 
The teaching language of the program is in English. And the teaching format, as I said before, is hybrid, meaning that there will be some courses or modules that are taught on campus face-to-face, -face, and some of them will be available online. And this will also depend on the specialization path that the student selects. The accreditation of the program is subject to formal approval. It's an ongoing process and it's expected to be completed in the next two years. So all you know, your degrees would be accredited by the relevant uh, national accreditation agencies of the eight countries. The location of the program, uh, we will explain this more visually in a couple of slides later, but every uh, all students start in the same place, which is at Ruhr University Bochum in Germany. And then depending on the uh, specialization path that the student decides to take and the mobility options they want to take, then they may move between one and four other cities, which can be um, Cork in Ireland, Istanbul in Turkey, Rotterdam in the Netherlands, Liege in Belgium, Zagreb in Croatia, Bilbao in Spain, or Ulu in Finland. So it's a truly international master's program where you will have the opportunity to um, experience several cultures, languages, uh, practices, and the, the facilities that are offered by the partner universities. You can see now who are the program partners. So what, as I said, these universities are all part of the unique European Alliance. And besides its location in post-industrial transition cities, they also have uh, expertise in engaged research and teaching on the topics of super diversity and inclusion from different faculties. As I said, it's an interdisciplinary uh, program. So each university is bringing a specific strength in, in terms of their uh, teaching and research capacities. And you're more than welcome to check each of their websites to learn more about you know, the whole university and then specifically about, for example, their faculties in education, in business, in social sciences and other areas. Now, the program, as we said before, it's a new program. So it's launching in 2024. That's when we will welcome its first cohort and we're very excited to to meet those future students in the program. So we wanted to give some practical information. And we will talk a little bit more in detail about this later after we talk about the program curriculum. The application period for that first cohort will start in on the 1st of March for all applicants. And for non-EU EFTA applicants, it will close on the 15th of May, 2024. And for EU EFTA um, students, it will close a bit later on the 15th of July. The applications will be received in an online format through the Ruhr University Bochum online application portal. It will open from the 1st of March. And then admitted students would start their studies in October 2024, as I said before, at Ruhr University Bochum. In terms of how big the program uh, is envisioned to be, it was designed for up to 53 students. However, as it's, it's the first year of the program, we're expecting that we may not you know, uh, receive 53 students, hopefully we will, but um, it may be a smaller cohort size for the first year, which also has its benefits, of course, because it means uh, much more dedicated uh, you know, teaching and hours for supervision and other benefits. But it's been designed with that uh, type of size in, in mind. Now we're gonna talk about the program structure. This is an overview of how the students would progress through the two years of the program, in which uh, it, it's a progression of first starting on the first semester with fundamentals. Then in the second semester, engaging in multidisciplinary perspectives, and that's a, a, at which point the students need to select a specific specialization path, depending on whether they want to go more in uh, you know, to look at educational perspectives, organizational perspectives, or social scientific perspectives. We will now hear from uh, representatives, you know, from professors in each of those specialization paths uh, to give us a more detailed uh, view of each of them. The third semester is designed to be more in-depth studies, depending again on the specialization chosen. And the final semester, the fourth semester, is when students are expected to complete 
a master's thesis or dissertation, and we will talk about what that entails. So to start talking about the, um, you know, what happens each semester, I would like to first invite Professor uh, Henrique to open her camera and her microphone to tell us about the first semester at Ruhr University, Bochum. Thank you very much, Melissa. I will now first talk about the Ruhr University Bochum in Germany, and then I will present the first semester, which provides fundamentals for the ZEOS master program. The first semester in ZEOS takes place in Bochum, as Melissa already mentioned, Germany on campus, um, as you can see on the right side of this slide. The Ruhr University Bochum is a public university in the west of Germany and the inauguration took place in 1965 with a special focus on the first generation students from non-academic background. And this is also interlinked to the fact that also Bochum, as the other Zeos universities, is um, placed in an area of post-industrialism. So here you can see how this uh, um, sort of took um, impact on um, the inauguration of this university. Today, the RUP is one of the 10 largest German universities with nearly 40,000 students, of which are around 6,000 international under and postgraduate students and 820 international PhD students. So it's, so it's a rather large university and the RUP offers 189 degree programs and 17 double and joint degree programs. The learning and teaching mission of the RUP includes the idea of teachers, students and staff being uh, jointly responsible for teaching and learning. And we learn and teach value-based and the unity of research and teaching is central to the RUP. We live freedom and diversity in teaching and learning which values international experiences. And therefore the RUP is, I think, a great place um, for a master's program like ZEOS. I would like to uh, go now on to the first semester of SEAS and give some details. Um, the aim of the module of the first, uh, the modules of the first semester is to lay the foundations for studying SEAS and to give orientation in the disciplinary field of research on superdiversity. Semester one provides fundamentals in three modules. In module A1, the so-called basic module, Students will be equipped with basic knowledge regarding the concept of superdiversity in the educational, organization, and sociological field. The module A2 is on div uh, diversity sensitive research, teaching and learning methods, and the module A3 is on mobility and exchange and focuses on the opportunity for students to establish networks and peer working groups within the ZEOS master program, as well as with other unique students from all over Europe. As one example of a course in this first semester, I would like to highlight the introductory lecture on super diversity, which is obligatory for all ZEOS students. All ZEOS students will be in Bochum in the first semester. And this lecture series is coordinated by Bochum to provide an interdisciplinary overview on the topics of superdiversity. In this lecture, all ZEOS partners are involved and present current research work on various dimensions of superdiversity and reflect on the most important theories and current research questions in this field. Alongside this, challenges and opportunities for research on discrimination based on race, class, gender, sexual orientation, and so on will be discussed. So thank you very much. And I will now give the word to my colleague presenting the um, pass one. Yes. Yes. So I would now like to invite Professor uh, Vishna Razik to tell us what happens. So now we're going to talk about the second and third semesters of the programs in which students make a choice of which specialization paths they would like to follow. So we're going to talk first about path one, which is a specialization in educational perspectives. And we have Professor Vishna from the University of Zagreb, who's going to give us an overview of this um, specialization path. 
Okay, hello once again to everyone. I'd like to pre present to you um, path, path one in our uh, sales program that I find very, very interesting and of great value. But before I start talking about the content and the possible outcomes of this program, I'd like to say something about the University of Zagreb. Uh, where I work. University of Zagreb is a part of this project. It has been from the beginning and we were working uh, in the creation of this study program. Uh, University of Zagreb is one of the oldest um, universities in Eastern and Southeastern Europe. It is the oldest university in Croatia. It's also the biggest university in Croatia. Uh, it has 29 faculties and three different art uh, academies. There's more than 7,900 professors or teachers teaching staff at the university and more than 72,000 students studying at these faculties, uh, developing their competencies and acquiring the degrees either in bachelor, a master or uh, uh, PhD study programs. I work at the Faculty of Teacher Education, which is taking part in the creation of this program. And Faculty of Teacher Education has more than 100 years long tradition in educating future teachers, no matter the level, whether it's preschool teachers, primary school teachers, or uh, teachers in general in secondary education. So with this as our background, I think it was obvious that we will take part in the creation of the path that takes uh, education and educational perspectives as the main topic of research and study. In the second semester, and study in Bochum or Cork, depending what you choose. If you decide to the research about educational concepts, educational perspectives, super diversity is part of education. Now, this content of this path really deals with the educational concepts and provides an overview of pedagogic perspectives on super diversity, including diversity sensitive teaching and learning methods and cultural responsive education. Moreover, the module will focus on the reflection and critical analysis of topics regarding super diversity, such as, such as social inequalities in educational systems, structural forms of discrimination and global inequalities. It gives also an insight into the crucial dimensions based on anti-discrimination law, where we talk about race and ethnicity, gender, uh, worldview, disability, sexual orientation, and many, many other uh, issues that we can have in education. Plus, there's always, always the dimension of class or social status of the student, and it is already stressed by a number of research uh, researchers that it is a really important um, uh, part of the education that needs to be taken into account when designing uh, diverse uh, and welcome uh, learning environment. This module also creates a space to reflect on your own positionalities and to discuss dilemmas of diversity sensitive teaching approaches, as well as ways to navigate these dilemmas on an individual and organizational level. We will also have a look at organizational frameworks, educational policies, school development concepts, educator competencies and innovative teaching and learning methods that are also covered and will be discussed. So it's going to be a very over very, very uh, fruitful, I think, path for anyone who deals with education in their studies. You can be a future teacher, doesn't matter, any general teacher, doesn't matter which level you plan to teach on. Or you can be a pedagogue, you could be educational manager or any person that's willing and to research and study about education more. There is a specific, uh, I think, bonus to this pathway. This pathway is highly virtual mobility. So in case that you cannot travel to all of the cities that you would like to go or study in all of the countries that you would like to, you can still finalize this uh, learning pathway, but by uh, joining us online. So this is the easier way for you to maybe finalize your studies, whether it depends on the funds or whether it depends on your family obligations or your life obligations at the moment. So we will deal first in the second semester with the broad topics that deal more generally about education, about super diversity as part of education, intersectionality, social inclusion. But then later on in the third semester, we'll talk about pedagogy, competence and literacy in the super diverse classroom, bringing it down to the classroom and which competencies teachers need to organize a uh, supportive and um, diverse classroom for all students. That's 
will be all for now. Thank you very much, Professor Vishna. That's a that's a great overview, um, and also uh, important to to highlight that that it offers some very specific uh, career options for uh, students in the program who choose this specialization path. Um, it also includes the practice module, and we will talk later about what that practice module is because that is a common thread across all of the different specialization paths. And, and it's the organization of a unique city lab, which will be decided by students in terms of the topic. And it will be one of the opportunities for students in the program to also engage with stakeholders and possibly future employers uh, through the organization of that event. So now I would like to uh, talk a little bit about the specialization path two, which is on the topic of organizational perspectives. Uh, for that, I'm also going to invite Professor Amanda Alencar from the Erasmus University Rotterdam to open her camera and her microphone. She will give us an overview of the um, specialization, and then I will talk a little bit about the modules and courses that will be on offer in Istanbul at Koch University. Thank you very much, Melissa. Um, I also, before introducing the second path, the second specialization in organizational perspectives, I also would like to highlight the role of Erasmus University Rotterdam in the program, uh, which has also um, contributed since the very beginning. Um, Erasmus delivers education, research, and advisory to develop human and institutional capacities to address global challenges like diversity, equity, environmental justice, and societal transition. So it's no surprise that Erasmus University is also actively involved and very interested in continuing um, to contribute to meaningfully to the program. Um, just to highlight some of the main facts about Erasmus University, it has been established in 1913, founded by the Rotterdam Business Community. The university has since evolved into a leading international research university with a strong focus on societal challenges. The university is named after the famous Dutch humanist Desiderius Erasmus. Desiderius Erasmus was a prominent scholar, theologian, and writer of the Renaissance period. Um, the university is also committed uh, to sustainability and social responsibility. It has been actively promoting um, several sustainable practices and social engagement, integrating these values into its research education and campus operations. Last but not least, Erasmus University has seven faculties, two special institutes, and a university college with its own board. Having said that, I wanted to highlight um, the module that will be taught at our university. And, um, and, and just to emphasize that uh, the CEOs program will be uh, connected with the Erasmus School of History, Culture and Communication. Um, our module focus on managing super diversity in the organizational context. In the first part of the module, the students will study and develop through, um, through this module, um, uh, they will be sent, the model will be centered around the management practices where students will focus on policy making, leadership, and communication strategies in the organizational context, which also, of course, deal with a lot of super diversity issues. In our module, but also connected to the CEOs program, organizations can take various forms, such as businesses corporations, technology companies, platforms, startups, nonprofit organizations, government agencies, education institutions, healthcare facilities, and more. The students in this module will learn about different perspectives that organizations may hold towards diversities, including, for example, colorblind, colorblind notions, multicultural, and valuing diversity concepts. And students will also learn how these concepts affect diversity outcomes. For example, the team's composition and diversity approach within a news media company can shape the content and narratives that are created. The courses in this module will also provide insights in how different leadership styles, such as transformational or 
participative leadership may affect diversity outcomes and how to enhance intercultural communication practices in the organizational context. Additionally, students will develop an understanding of the ways in which digitalization creates opportunities to promote diversity and inclusion within organizations and business practices. Last but not least, the courses will uh, taught by Erasmus will emphasize how virtual collaboration tools can support diverse teams and enable individuals from different cultures to contribute their unique perspectives, as well as the role of the digital economy in providing avenues and pathways for underrepresented and marginalized groups to engage in a digital economy. So the outcome, possible outcomes of this module uh, include um, opportunities for employment in a, media, in a media business industry, as well as across different organizations, international organizations, non-governmental organizations, and so forth. I'll be happy to also address more questions about this module um, in a while. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Um... Amanda, so I will now give also a little uh, summary about our university, Coach University. In a similar vein to Erasmus University Rotterdam, it's a it's one of our oldest partner universities as well, and, and Coach has also been part of the unique alliance from the beginning. Our university is a young research university. We were set up 30 years ago, and also uh, it came about from the need to train well-rounded professionals uh, for Turkey, and it evolved into the the mission to be a center of excellence, not only in, in Turkey, but the whole region. It is backed by the resources and the funding of the Behbi Koch Foundation, which is one of the largest philanthropical, philanthropic organizations in Turkey, and one of their biggest uh, areas of work is education. So from the beginning, we've had a lot of, uh, beginning of our institution, we've had a lot of uh, collaboration and input from the business world and different types of organizations in, in terms of the shaping of our curriculums and our offers and extracurricular activities. So uh, our oldest graduate school, for example, is the Graduate School of Business and several of the courses that will be offered at Coach University as part of the sales programs are offered between the Graduate School of Business and the Graduate School of Social Sciences and Humanities. Our university in terms of overall size is approximately 8,000 students, the majority at the undergraduate level, but we have a continuously growing number of master and PhD students who join now over 45 different programs, and we're structured around seven different colleges and four graduate schools. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what happens in the second semester, and within the, the organizational perspectives, path, the specialization path, the idea was to really uh, create some, some nexus between organizations and society and, and diversity, sorry. So that semester focuses on diversity and management in organizations, as well as the, the different processes that have an influence on the diversity inclusion related agenda. So you can take, uh, take a, a lens towards the organizational level. The first module that you see here, it's it shows an option 2A and option 2B. That means that um, all students uh, need to take the B1 module, which will be offered online, but the B2 and uh, B3 modules are taken in person. So I will talk a little bit about module uh, B2, which talks about super, uh, encompasses super diversity, organizational culture, and management. Specifically, the first part of the module focuses on diversity, diversity management, and cross-cultural management in organizations. So that's the focus of the of the first part. So here, uh, there will be courses and uh, content related to human resource management, leadership, communication, teamwork. And then the second part of the module focuses on different agents and processes of social change. So then we we go out of the organization understood uh, simply from, for example, a private sector perspective to also include uh, themes such as, you know, how does the third sector, NGOs, volunteerism, social entrepreneurship um, influence policy design and implementation. 
So there are different courses that will be available to sales students under this module. I will just um, read now the, the names of those courses, but won't go into too much detail about the content. So for example, one course is sociology of organizations. Another course is management of diversity in organizations. Uh, there is a, a very interesting uh, course uh, about creating social impact through collaborative project management in an experiential learning. So this is a very hands-on urban laboratory uh, type course that we're offering. Uh, another course is international organizations and NGOs, globalization, multinational corporation and states, and another course on civil society, philanthropy, and the nonprofit sector. So the idea of this um, specialization path is for students who would want to have a high level of physical mobility in which they would do their second semester in Istanbul so that they can take part in the B2 module and then uh, move to Rotterdam to the Netherlands to undertake semester three at Erasmus University Rotterdam and take uh, some of the courses that were previously uh, described by Professor um, Alencar. So now we're gonna to move to path number three in social and scientific uh, perspectives. So let me move along. Okay, social and scientific perspectives. For this, I'm going to invite Professor Joa Hitola from the University of Ulu to provide an overview of the path and also of their university. Hi everyone. Um... So happy to uh, be speaking here and, uh, and, and to anyone who listens to these recordings. So uh, actually I didn't prepare anything special from our university, but maybe maybe it might be even refreshing. So I will go through a lot of um, administrative talk at least um, about our university, but um, I would maybe just say that the University of Oulu, it's a, it's a it's a big university. It's an Arctic university, uh, part of the Arctic Five Alliance, and 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 uh, uh, as such, it, it it the profile um is uh focused on the on the issues of the of the Nordics um and and the sort of the. The human sciences, meaning education, um, humanities, social sciences, they are focused on on this kind of a, a stream of humans in change. So, so in this way, um, the issues of super diversity are at the core of the university's um, uh, what would I say policies, I guess. So, so, but I will speak a little bit about the. Um, a path three, which is uh, called social scientific perspectives. Um, I am going to be uh, uh, the coordinator or leader of um, of the module C three intersectionality and decolonial perspectives in a mobile society, uh, which I'm I'm a lecturer in uh, gender studies. So so this is uh, inspired, of course, by feminist and decolonial theory. Then. But um, but as a whole, uh, the um, sem during semester two, the students will um, in this path uh, they will uh, be at the uh, Bochum and um, and then uh, later. Let me see um, to study the module uh, B one and then uh, study the module uh, B two. Um, which is offered by by the University College uh, Cork. I think now it said, says um, says Bochum, but 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 in any case, Cork is Cork is um, responsible for the B three super diversity, intersectionality, and social inclusion, social scientific perspectives. So um, as a whole, uh, what I thought to say about this path uh, also. <laughs> maybe as a as a sort of a marketing of why you should be um focusing on this path is um is that i i think that these issues um that we are going to deal with in this uh study path are at the core of the um of the whole discussion on on super diversity 
which actually is very close to the different uh, uh, discussions in feminist theory um, on intersectionality uh, concept that was introduced earlier. Uh, so in this in this path, um, uh, we are focusing on uh, well, of course, understanding of theoretical framework related to inclusion, um, critical multicultural culturalism, super diversity, decolonization, and and then the intersectionality I mentioned. Uh, uh, this is this is this understanding is developed by evaluating the social, political, and temporal constructions of migration, uh, super diversity, and mechanisms of inclusion and exclusion. And then, connected to that, also demonstrating knowledge on transnational migration patterns and uh, processes. Uh, also, the issues of forced migration, which are linked to many many societal. Um, and global changes such as climate change. Um, but we are looking at the role of agency and social activism, for example, um, and, and thinking about uh, migrant resilience and different um, life paths. But um, maybe uh, maybe in the module B3, uh, which is sort of kind of the introduction to the uh, module C3, um, uh, that just because it's it's offered by uh, by Cork and and the specialization is making maybe more on migration and um, mobility and then the C three is more more focused on on decolonial um, and intersectional perspectives also because of the different focuses of the different universities so. So what is very, what is unique um, in the semester three is that we are also look, looking into into the issues of uh, indigenous knowledges um, and indigenous issues such as land rights and 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 different um, colonial processes and 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 how to kind of develop the decolonial gaze that uh, we think is is needed in in today's world and is um, especially relevant to the discussions on super diversity. Uh, then we, uh, of course, in, in this module, well, we aim towards exploring the theoretical approaches that are related to uh, the uh, master's thesis, which is going to uh, be the next step after, after this. Um, After after the um, B one B three C three and D modules, uh, so so um, so we are also um, and also because of the discipline, we are really uh, focusing on on different research methodologies, and this will be the core um, content um, in this. Uh, study path and and I and I think this is a and I could market this for for anyone who is interested in research career as well because of the um, theoretical and the um, methodological uh, focus and contribution uh, that we wish to uh, uh, make in in this um, study path uh, so so then also connected to this and 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 to the um, focus on strengthening research skills we are also um, uh, and one of our learning outcomes is also to understand ethics uh, and reflectivity uh, and decolonial practice and approaches in research um, especially and so the uh, b3 uh, module will be uh, um, more lecturing uh, and the C3 will also uh, include a course on uh, which is more practice oriented and this will also help you in in then jumping into the D the practice module that um, where you where you participate in the in the CD labs um, of the program but as a as a whole uh, whole i think this is a more general uh, study path um, in some ways but then more focused study path uh, 
in terms of maybe uh, developing theoretical uh, and methodological knowledge for uh, research and, and all kinds of development work um, that can be done in the field of um, super diversity. So uh, I'll be happy to answer any, any questions about this uh, study path. Of course, I know most about our module, which is the C3 intersectionality and decolonial, decolonial perspectives uh, module, but um, I'm waiting forward to the discussion at the end. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Joa. So now uh, we have gone through the fundamentals in the first semester, then multidisciplinary perspective semester, semester two, and had a look at the in-depth studies that will be offered in semester three according to each of the three specialization paths. The last semester of the program will consist of a master thesis. And for this, I would like to invite Professor Sandra Asman from Ruhr University Bochum to tell us more about what that semester will look like for students in the program. Yeah, thank you very much, Melissa. You will complete this um, hopefully interesting study program, interdisciplinary program with the master thesis. And um, we have some unique points, unique aspects here as well, because um, the topic you should choose for your master thesis, of course, should be related to your specialization, which means um, that you could write about a topic in educational science, in social sciences, or also in organizational sciences. And we would like to interlink this uh, E module or module E with the practice module D, which means um, that we would like to encourage you to base it on your collaborative research and practice experience that you made in practice module D. For example, the city labs could be the origin for an interesting topic of your master's thesis or engaged research, um, which is a very interesting element in the whole unique program. Um, part of citizen science, for example, um, possibilities to work with stakeholders from cities, um, from uh, NGOs, for example, or from schools or other partners. Um, another point is that your academic research project uh, has both uh, scientific and societal relevance, uh, which means it can be based on the needs of um, special stakeholders in different sectors of the society, as I mentioned before, NGOs, but also enterprises or schools or other institutions who are interested um, in working together with you as a student. And I think it could be a real good um, possibility also to get, for, for example, a position after um, your master thesis or to write a master thesis, um, which is very relevant for the stakeholder. Uh, we also have um, support for the master thesis. There is a um, compulsory participation in a virtual master thesis colloquium. It's um, virtual because you can write your master thesis at any partner university, um, but the colloquium is offered by the University of Deusto in Bilbao, uh, and you can participate it online from um, the place you are in the fourth semester. For example, you are um, in uh, Ireland, in Cork. Uh, it's also possible to participate here, or you are in the Netherlands, it's no problem. Um, we will also have a final oral examination, uh, which means um, the oral examination is uh, accompanying the master thesis. It consists of a um, 30 to 45 minutes defense uh, in which you have to answer critical questions on your master thesis to see that you are um, that you have a really uh, knowledge of your topic and uh, that you can defend it um, in front of your uh, supervisors. Um, and it's also um, very special that we have a co-supervision by two faculty members, so it will also be possible to write your master thesis in cooperation with different partners. Um, and I think it's a really good possibility to, um, yeah, to, to find an interesting topic, um, which really is super diverse and uh, which can be 
uh, accompanied by interesting um, members of our colleague. And I, I think you have seen we are only a few persons here today, but uh, we represent our universities, um, which offer you a very broad um, very broad uh, possibilities of different topics in uh, gender studies, in migration studies, educational studies. Um, so we hope uh, that you will find your topic and um, the, the people who would like to supervise your topic. Yeah, and then you have a joint degree master. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> indeed. That's where we are. We would like all of our uh, students to you know succeed. Um, just very quickly, I wanted to invite uh, Professor Elena, uh, who is here from the University of Deusto, to maybe share a couple of uh, thoughts about the uh, thesis colloquium in terms of uh, how does it work. Uh, um, just just to give an idea of the format of this, if it's possible. And if you want to also talk about the University of Deusto briefly about. Uh, uh, as an option for the students to complete uh, some of their studies or their fourth semester there. Thank you, Melissa. Yeah, I would like to briefly mention, mention a few words about the University of Deusto. Founded in 1886, the university focuses on the following areas, education, social sciences, business, law, engineering, health sciences, psychology, sports, theology, languages, and communication. For more than 130 years, the University of Deusto has been offering a space for high quality education in the transmission and generation of new knowledge at the service of society. The social impact of our teaching and research is a very important part of the university's vision and mission. Its teaching activities aimed at training the best professionals and citizens capable of generating solutions and hope in the face of today's great challenges. We have campuses located in Bilbao and San Sebastian, and also Madrid and Vitoria. Um, on one hand, we are a local university which collaborates closely with institutions, companies, and other agents in the surrounding area. But at the same time, we're open to the world and to internationalization as evidenced by the many projects and agreements with entities around the world, as well as uh, more than 1,000 students from 70, country, 70 countries. The university itself has more than 11,000 students and close to 4,600 participants in continuing education and executive education programs. In the sales program, we are represented by the Faculty of Education and Sports, where I teach in programs related to primary education as well as social education. Um, as Sandra has mentioned before, uh, the master thesis and the colloquium will be um, will be um, coordinated by the University of Deusto. Uh, writing a thesis is a central feature of the program, and each student uh, needs to demonstrate at the end of this program that they are capable to contribute to the academic debate of a specific subject within the CO's disciplines. Uh, for that, a colloquial will be organized during the uh, last semester. And um, this will be a space for students to share their findings, their insights, also to um, see how their peers are progressing in their work through shared peer feedback. Also, uh, it will be an opportunity not to be so solitary in this last uh, phase of the writing of the uh, thesis. Wonderful, thank you so much. And you have highlighted an important aspect, which is, um, yes, thesis writing can be a, a solitary endeavor. So uh, this will be a great opportunity for the cohort to uh, come back together virtually and and learn from what each of the students in each of the different uh, specialization paths have been working on and what specific topics they are developing for their thesis. So um, because it's a new program, there has been a lot of work and effort put into designing from the start all the ways in which students will be supported to succeed. 
So there will be regular counseling, uh, you know, uh, hours or facilities available to students from the a university that coordinates the program, Rural University at Bochum. So there is a student coordination, uh, you know, uh, person in place for this. And we also have uh, Ms. Monica here from the coordination team who will be dealing with all student-related administrative processes as well as in coordination with the partners. There's also a very detailed program and module handbook that will provide you as a future student uh, with help to navigate through all the all the options that we have kind of um, uh, gone through today, but in much more detail. So you will be able to see in detail the specific um, module descriptions, as well as the uh, courses that will be available under each of those modules in terms of the teaching methods, learning formats, uh, workloads, ECTS credits, how they will be assessed, uh, and any other necessary information. Um, besides that, of course, each of the partner universities has um, committed to make available to SEO students all of their different university services that are available to graduate students. For example, career, uh, career services or career development centers in each of the universities will be available to support students as they, as, as they move towards their graduation point. Now, when it comes to that point, of course, it's important to consider um, when, when thinking about doing a master's program, what would be the possible career paths after graduation. So this program uh, will be creating opportunities to meet with potential employers before graduation. So through the different um, lectures and who are invited, you know, there are different stakeholders that will be invited to participate as guest lecturers, there will be the city labs where, as we mentioned before, there will be different stakeholders invited to participate. There will be the support from the career services that I mentioned before. And when we look at potential employment positions for graduates from the program, it's a very long list here. We just wanted to put you know, some examples um, of positions or job titles that when you look at the European labor market, these are continuously growing in every, nearly every industry and every sector. Um, of course, as Professor Joa mentioned before, for students who are more inclined towards um, developing professionally as researchers and scientists in, in the area of super diversity, the program would give them the option to continue towards a doctoral degree um, at any of the eight uh, participating partner universities and other universities worldwide. Um, but if students are more inclined towards a professional role, for example, in international development, whether that's in terms of educational projects or in terms of organizational and other areas, then the list really goes on and on in terms of pos possible employment positions. On the screen, you can also see uh, um, a representation of what are the different competences that the program graduates are expected to demonstrate by the time they graduate, both on a personal and professional dimension, and in terms of their disciplinary knowledge and skills, and those that are also uh, relevant on a societal level. And essentially, the main competence or the core competence that this program is developing in its students is the ability to mainstream an intersectional uh, and intersectoral uh, approach to super diversity and the understanding of that complexity uh, and how it applies to different uh, settings and how it contributes to the overall sustainable development goals agenda. Now we're going to talk about admissions. I'm mindful of the time, so we've run a little bit over time over our planned um, schedule hour, but I hope that that's okay with you and that you can stay a little bit longer with us. Um, all of the information that we're going to give from now onwards is, of course, also available on the program website, which you can see on the screen. Now we're going to talk about admissions. So the ideal student uh, profile for this program can come can have diverse backgrounds, uh, but they should have completed or will be completing a bachelor's degree or university first cycle degree before the start of the program in a discipline of relevance to the program, whether that's related to educational sciences or um, social sciences or, uh, or you know, relevant areas. So any experience, especially research experience in themes related to diversity, inclusion, educational sciences would also be uh, considered an, an asset or an advantage for admission. So uh, this is a 
you know, it's a list to give an idea, but it's not uh, exclusive. So as I said, graduates from programs in education, social sciences, or related fields of study would be welcome to apply. In terms of the application documents, we won't go into too much detail about this, but it's typically what you would expect from a research uh, master's programs in a European uh, university. So you would need identification documents such as a passport, a copy of your diploma, uh, academic transcripts, uh, curriculum vitae or CV or resume, uh, proof of your English language abilities where applicable unless you're applying from a country that the partners consider to be English speaking or you have completed your previous education, such as your bachelor's degree, uh, completely in English language. There are some specific requirements for our university due to national regulations. So if you choose to come uh, here for the second semester under the organizational uh, perspectives specialization path, we will need you to provide a specific English test, and there are some exceptions to this. And a structured motivation letter describing your specific interest in the program. And there are some guidelines on the website, on the program website, about that motivation letter. The, um, the admission of students is conducted by a committee, the Admissions and Examinations Committee, and they will rank uh, submitted, you know, at, at a candidates on a qualitative basis, taking into account all the information that is provided. The program only has one intake per year, which will be for the fall semester, as I said, for students to start in October. It will be done online in terms of the application process. And as we mentioned before, the applications will open in about a month, less than a month now, in the, on the 1st of March. So very briefly, to give you an idea of the timeline or process, for non-EU or EFTA candidates, uh, the applications, as I said, will open on the 1st of March, will close on the 15th of May. Then all candidates who have submitted their applications correctly with all the required documents will be evaluated by the Admissions and Examinations Committee. And then um, candidates who are selected for admission will be sent offer letters by the program coordinator in June with the idea that they have enough time to apply for, if needed, to the uh, Rural University Bochum's housing, like the dormitory housing facilities. If not, then that's irrelevant. And then uh, they would be able to complete their enrollment as a new student at the university until the end of September and then start the program in October. For EU students uh, or EFTA um, students, then it's a similar process. Uh, the only difference is that the application period is slightly longer. It will close on the 15th of July and offer letters will be sent during August so that they can also complete their enrollment as new students during the month of September and start the program in October. Now we will talk about tuition fees and living expenses. This is, an, this is a, of course, an important consideration for um, anyone who's considering further education. The tuition fees for two years of the program for non-EU students is 18,000 euros. And for EU, EFT and Turkish students, it's 9,000 euros. So these tuition fees are paid by semester. So you divide this amount into four. So those are the fees uh, per semester that you would need to pay. There are no scholarships available for the program as of right now, but we have included several information resources on the program website about websites where you can check if you would be eligible for external or third party fellowships or grants, which are awarded by different organizations to see if you qualify for those. And of course, we would recommend to check um, resources in your country for further education or master's degree education in the disciplines that this program is covering. In terms of living costs, for you to have an idea of how much to budget for the, for example, for the first semester in which all students will be in Germany at the city of Bochum, the, their international office has very helpfully prepared a table. You can see the details on the program website, but you should expect to budget uh, between 5,000 to 9,000 euros for the first semester, including accommodation costs, of course, to, to the first semester. Then what happens in the second, third, and fourth semester, of course, depending on your choices, will incur in higher or lower living costs. 
If you want to contact us after today with because you have more or individual questions, you can, of course, reach uh, the team to the email address that you see on the screen, which is seos, S-E-O-S, at rub.de, or through the website, which we invite you to please check because we will be putting more content and more details as um, the months go by during this year. And we would also invite you to start following for updates on the overall unique LinkedIn channels and Instagram channels. Now it's time for questions. So I, I know I went very quickly through the last part. So we're going to now uh, check out what questions have been posted by our participants today. And I want to thank you for staying because I know we have run a little bit over time. So the first question is, um, is, is it possible to take the course fully online or do you have to visit your chosen university from time to time? So I, I think I can answer that. So the, the course is not fully online. The first semester, it's compulsory for all students to be physically at uh, the Ruhr University Bochum in Germany. Then if, for example, you choose um, specialization path one or three, these were designed to have a high virtual mobility component. So in that case, you can, um, you can, for example, take the, the modules online. Uh, if anyone wants to add anything to this answer, can jump in, but th that's, I think, the, the answer. Yes, okay. Uh, the second question we have here, is the master's degree compatible with all bachelor degrees or does it only works as an addition to a bachelor of arts degree? So I think the question is if the person or if the candidate has graduated with the Bachelor of Sciences, for example, or a, a different bachelor's qualification if they would be eligible to apply. For that, I would like to ask one of our colleagues from uh, Ruhr to answer maybe, Monica. Or... Yeah, thank you, Melissa. I would like to answer the question. Um, well, we are inviting um, students from very diverse study backgrounds. This means that Sales is opened as well as for students with a Bachelor of Arts degree, but as well as students that have a Bachelor of Science, for example, in economic management and economics. So they can choose the path to and make a specialization in those concepts, but they can also, and they're able to choose path one and get a new insight. Um, what is important to consider is that you must have um, some academic experience or some practical experience in diversity related topics. This means that as Melissa stated, we have an ideal student which has studied, for example, education sciences and then goes into path one and spe specializes in this uh, area. But sales is not limited to this one student. Um, we are really open to people that, for example, have some professional competences in the field of super diversity or that already have gained practical experience in, in the field of diversity and inclusion or some that really can say, okay, why do I want to study sales and what who do I want to become or people or possible students that um, have competences in, in analyzing problems. Um, so, in general, we are really open to, to diverse study backgrounds, but it is important to, to have a first um, a level of English competences, which is the B2 level. And um, regarding the, the topics you have studied, it is important to, to have a basic knowledge on, on diverse um, concepts. Um, but even though they are not in their studies, we can, we can change this in the first semester, but uh, we are really um, open for your, for your yeah, applications and for your ideas of why sales is important and why would you would like to study this. Yeah, I hope this, this answers the question. <laughs> Thank you very much, Monica. Uh, yes, it does. You have also touched upon an important point, which I think we skipped a bit um, in the previous content, in the previous slides, um, which is that uh, you will see once the application period starts in March, once you log in and create your user in the application portal, the application form will ask you to indicate what is your specialization path choice. Um, and then based on that, the program, uh, you know, the program coordinators 
will try to assign you to your chosen specialization path. However, uh, if it's not possible to put everyone in their preferred choice, they will also inform you and you will be asked to take a different path at which point you can you can decide. Uh, but the idea is that everyone will be, of course, on their on their chosen uh, specialization. Uh, if you're not sure about which specialization would be the best fit for you in terms of your academic background and career plans, then this is uh, you know, a question that, of course, you can communicate with the team to get a bit more guidance uh, once you're starting to complete your application. Let's see if we have other questions here. Okay, so um, if we don't have any other further questions, it seems we don't. I want to then um, thank all of our participants today for taking the time to learn more about the concept of, of super diversity and about our universities, unique and the new master's programs. I also want to thank our panelists today who have joined us from nearly everywhere in, in Europe. And we're very thankful for their time. They're all academicians who have very busy schedules. So we really appreciate your um, your cooperation in this activity. And with that, and also to Ms. Monica, who is going to be coordinating all of this uh, going forward for all the future students. So with that, then I will close the webinar for today and want to thank you and wish you a good weekend ahead, wherever you are. Thank you.